Hello, guys. Uh, welcome back to Math Zone African Motives. Uh, still on our mathematics and six, working on differential equations. Uh, this is April 2023 exam, and uh, that is question number four. Determine on 4.1 the general solution of. So there we are given uh, 4.1. Uh, if we check this equation, it is referred to as a first order. All right, that's a first order linear differential equation. All right, so that's, that's uh, we are given uh, x squared dy dx uh, mm -hmm. plus 2xy is equal to cos squared x. So what you just need here is to know the format, all right? We're given this is a differential, a first order, and we're asked to find the general solution, all right? So this is what you have. I'm gonna explain from your formula sheet here. You are given that the derivative of y with respect to that is dy dx plus py is equal to q. It follows that in order for you to have this, we are gonna give this in this format, all right? So what does it mean? Let me explain that way. Okay, so that is what we are going to have. Remember, this is revision, guys, all right? So we are saying, if we are given the derivative of y with respect to x plus p y in this case is equal to q, it follows that we are supposed to use y, the integral. So this is e to the exponent of p, which is referred to as the, uh, the integral factor. All right, and this is equal to the integral of, so there we're gonna have the integral of Q times E to the exponent of the integral of P with respect to X, all right. So like I say, this here that we see is referred to as the integral factor is simply from the integral of P. P represents this part that is affecting Y provided that your equation is in this format. So if we check here, we, the, our equation is not in this format because we have this x squared that is affecting. So to have this as dy dx, we are supposed to divide by the coefficient of x squared of, of dy dx, each and every part. So we divide here by x squared, we divide here by x squared, we divide here by x squared, each and every term. So that this will cancel, we remain with the format of dy dx, which is our linear format, dy dx plus here we put x and x, so that's x into x squared, is, which is going to be x. So we are supposed to have this as p, like this plus p, where p is a function of x. This p and the q, these two are functions of x, right? So we have to write it in a proper way where we can properly see the function. The function that is carrying x here is this part of 2 over 2 over x. That is our p, right? So it's going to be plus... 2 over x like this, all right, times y like this. So we want to properly see what is representing our p. So our p is this part here, all right, p, y, all right, is equal to q is also a function of x. And this is the function of x that we have. And this cannot be simplified. We just have to leave it like that, which is cos squared x over, over x squared. All right, we just have to leave it like that. So this is what we are supposed to have. From this formula that we have here, it follows that we are supposed to determine e to the exponent of the integral of p. That is uh, our integral factor in that case, all right? So we are going to determine what we refer to as the integral factor. So the integral factor is e to the exponent of the integral of p with respect to x. And I say the p in this case is this part that we see p the part that is affecting y and our p, in this case is 2 over x, this is our p, and this is our q, functions of x. So we take this function of x, which is 2 over, which is 2 over x. So this is the integral of 2 over x like this with respect to x. That is our integral factor, that is what it means. All right, meaning to say we are supposed to integrate so we can factor out the 2 out of the integral, we remain with 1 over x like this, with respect to x, and we know that we can integrate this. Uh, that is going to be a lin, so it's going to be two lin of x, all right? Then we're gonna have the cost of integration, this and that, but we are not focusing on that. We just want to have this part here. So this is the integral factor that we were supposed to substitute here. We also substitute it here. 
But now there's something that is happening on our integral factor, which is something that we are supposed to take into consideration from our laws of exponents. In our N3, we said when E is being raised to the exponent of lean X, E to the exponent of lean X like this is going to give us what? Is going to give us X, provided that this here is a single term that is affecting X. This is going to be your answer. So it means e to the exponent of lean x squared is going to give us x squared. If it is to the exponent of x cubed, our answer is going to be x cubed. Whenever we deal with a lean with e being raised to an exponent of a lean, we can use that. So if we check here, we've got e to the exponent of two lean x. So we want to have it as a single term of a lean. Remember from our laws of logarithms, this two, it can be raised to be the exponent on x. So it will be lean x squared like this. Once we have this, we can take it to say, if this is e to the exponent of lean x, and our answer is x. So it means e to the exponent of lean x squared, our answer is going to be what? x squared, the part that is affected by lean, which is x squared. So the wall of this simplification that we see here, this e to the exponent of two, it is going to give us what? X squared at the end. So you wonder where is this X squared coming from? We are applying our laws of X from our exponents, all right? E to the exponent of lean X gives us, gives us lean X. So we can simplify that further. All right, so that means wherever we see uh, E to the exponent of this P, uh, integral of P, we are going to substitute X squared. So that is our formula that we are going to have here. Remember our formula, we said, therefore our formula is supposed to be Y, E to the exponent of the integral of P with respect to X is supposed to be the integral of Q uh, times E to the exponent of P with respect to X with respect to X. So we are going to have Y times E to the, which is our integral factor, this E to the exponent, this one. The e to the exponent of p is the one that we simplified and this integral factor, it gave us what? x squared in simplest form. So this is going to be y times x squared is equal to the integral of q, which is the function of x on this part. That is our q and this is our q here from the format that we have, this is our q, which is cos squared x over x squared like this times, all right, so this is times what? E to the X, which is our integral factor. Our integral factor, our integral are the same. So we got here X squared. So that is going to be times X squared. So we integrate this with respect to X. We are going to integrate this with respect, uh, with respect to X. So don't be afraid dear. There's nothing that is happening here. If you check properly, these two are the same. Uh, this is same as over one. These two can cancel x squared and x squared. So you're just left here with y x squared is equal to the integral of cos squared x. So this is the integral of cos squared x with respect to x. And how do you integrate that? That is the question. How do you integrate uh, a cos squared? A cos squared, we are supposed to know this. It's only that I did not insert the formula sheet. But uh, if you check properly, from your formula sheet on page number three of your formula sheet down, 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 down on the bottom part, you are going to see that the integral there of a cos squared, it's written as a cos squared ax. They wrote it as cos squared ax. So it is going to give you uh, x over two. So that's x over two plus the sine of two ax, like this over, over four a plus c. So that's how you integrate a cos. It's a formula that you're given in your formula sheet on page number three. Like I said, just check also so that we try to move on together. So this is going to give us a y x squared, which is equal to the integral of cos squared uh, is x over two. So this is going to be x over two plus sine two ax. This is our ax, like, like this part ax. Our a here is one, it's like one x. So you multiply two times one X, which is going to be what, two X. So this is going to be sine two X, not sine X, but sine two X, because we are having two times. So this is going to be sine two uh, X. Everything over four times A, our A is the coefficient of X, which is one. So four times one is what, the four. So that is what you're going to have. So you take the coefficient of X A, 
is the coefficient here, the, the letter affecting x, meaning to say the number affecting x here is what is one, that is your a. So that was going to be our final uh, answer. So remember the question there is asking us to determine what we refer to as the general solution. So the general solution, you leave your answer in terms of C with this uh, constant of integration. But uh, if you are finding the particular solution, they will give you the values of, they will, you are going to be given the value of X and the value of Y so that you'll be able to find the value of what? The value of C. But in this case, you just leave it like that. So that was the idea. So as long as you're dealing with a, a first order, this is the format that you need. From the format, this is how you integrate. So all you just need is to find the integral factor by finding this integral factor, you substitute into the formula. You're already given the formula from the formula yeah, from the formula sheet. So you're just substituting. And after substituting, whatever that happens, I do not know what's going to happen inside of this integral. But you have to integrate whatever that you get uh, from that part with respect to with respect to x. That was uh, the idea of this question. All right. Let us check uh, the other part, 4.2. We are now given the second order now. That is uh, the second derivative. Uh, this time we've got uh, 4.2. All right. So this is given as a d squared y dx squared uh, plus dy dx. All right. Minus 2y is equal to half of x. So this is half of x. And there we are given if y is equal to this, there's an information that we are given. Why are we given this? Because they need us to find the particular solution. So the particular solution, we are supposed to substitute some certain information so that we have, so we're going to see this information later, later, later on. All right, remember the format that you're supposed to have under uh, your second order, you're supposed to have this in the form of A, uh, d squared uh, y dx squared plus B, uh, dy dx plus cy is equal to f of x. Remember, this is the format that you're supposed to have. And from this, you're supposed to formulate what is called the auxiliary equation. The auxiliary equation is the one that we let wherever there is a dy dx, we are going to let that to be equal to r. So we are going to let r to be equal to dy dx. And at that moment, we are going to let y to be equal to 1. And f of x, which is this function of x, which represents a linear, half x, a linear uh, function. We are going to let that to be equal to zero. These are the conditions that we have. So in place of dy d squared, we're going to have r. So this will be r squared. Uh, all right. So this will be like this. So we're going to have r squared plus here we're going to have r in place of dy minus in place of y, we're going to have one. So minus two times one is minus two, which is equal to so this is going to give us a zero. So we have formulated a quadratic equation that we are supposed to solve for r in this case. These are, why am I writing in r? If we check here, I want you to see something. Uh, all right, let's just hope I'm gonna be able to find this part here. All right, I want you to see something here on your formula sheet. All right, I'm writing this in r because if you check these solutions, they are given in terms of what? In terms of r. These solutions, they say if R1 is equal to R2, these are solutions. Then this is how you present your complementary function from these solutions that you obtain from the auxiliary equation. So the auxiliary equation helps you to obtain what it is referred as the complementary uh, function. So let us see what you're going to have from there. So we have to find uh, the solutions, which is R1 and R2, depending uh, with the solution. Are we going to have different solutions? Are we going to have the solutions that are the same? Are we going to have a, a continuum of the imaginary whereby we are dealing with what? Complex solutions. All right, so this is a quadratic. Uh, do we have factors? That is the question. Do we have factors here? If not, uh, then we can try to use quadratic formula minus two here. Factors of minus two that we add to get a one. Yes, we have there. So we're gonna have two brackets. Remember from your factorization, guys, this is a one. So you're gonna have R here, R here. So factors of minus two. That we add to get a positive one here, it will be two and negative one. If we multiply this, we get a negative two. If we add these two, we get a positive one. Two plus minus one. So we put plus two here and also minus one is equal to zero. So you can solve for R. That means R is going to give us uh, to the other side minus two or R is equal to 
uh, a positive one on the other side, or R is gonna be a positive one. So we've got two solutions representing R in this case, negative two and a positive one. So which uh, complementary are you going to use? How are we going to write our complementary? Okay, these solutions, they are different. So we are going to use this one. We stay on this one, it says that R1, where R1 is not equal to R2, these are solutions. They are not equal. So the complementary is going to be given this way. So this is going to be your YC. YC is going to be A, R1, like we are going to use this format here, right? So I'm going to use that uh, because these solutions are different. They are not equal, they are not the same, all right? So you have to choose one from those ones, all right? If they were the same, you use the second one, but these ones, they are not the same. So it means therefore our complementary, which is YC from that format, it was given as A, R, uh, A, R1, it was given as A, sorry, A, E to the exponent, A, E to the exponent of R1, X plus B, E to the exponent of R2, X. So these are just solutions to say, this is our R1, this can be our R2. So that, thus, therefore, uh, YC is gonna be given as A, all right, e to the exponent of r there, which is minus two. So that will be minus two x plus b, which is e to the exponent. The second solution is one, so it's gonna be one x. So it will be just one x like that. Okay, so this a and b, we are going to find them later on. Let this, this one is going to be our final stage of finding a and b. When, when they ask you to find the particular solution like this one, we need the particular solution. So it means you have to find A and B. But if it was for the general solution, you just leave A and B. But to find A and B, that is the, the last part that you're supposed to think about when you find Y is equal to YC plus YP, whereby we add the complementary function and our particular integral together. That's where you find these values of A later, later, later there. And that is our final, final, final stage after we are done. So where do we go now? We are supposed to find our particular integral, yp. So yp is taken always, I said, well, you take it from what you are given here, this whole intake, I mean, this whole uh, derivative that we have, it is equal to a half x. It is equal to what? A half x. So we are not given this now, that is the problem. We are not given this in our formula sheet to say, how do you separate uh, these ones after that? But this is what you do. You work with this to say, is it a constant? Is it a linear? Is it a quadratic? Is it an exponential? All right, so if it is a, a condition that you are working with a quadrat, uh, I mean, a linear like this, we have, remember the format of a linear is of AX, uh, mx plus c, remember that format of a linear. So when you expand, because we have already used a and b, so yp is going to be given as the format, it's gonna be cx plus b from the format of a linear, mx plus c, the linear format. So you're gonna have yp is equal to cx plus d. If it was a quadratic, the format of a quadratic is a x squared plus bx plus c. So when you find yp, for a quadratic, it is gonna be given as, we start with C, both A and B, they are used. So it's going to be C, X squared plus DX plus E. Following this format, we are just putting C, this will be D, this will be E. Just like this part, this is our C, this is our D. If it is an exponential function, we are supposed to have our Y as, if it is a uh, exponential, we are supposed to have it in the form of CX E to the exponent of KX, provided that we are given an exponential. So it depends with what you are given. You can be given a trig. You can be given a constant. If it is a constant, y will be just equal to c. This whole part is for the particular integral. So it depends with what you have on the f of x here. Our f of x is what? It's a linear. So we have to write it as a linear equation, cx plus d, because we have already, we have already used a and b here. So we have to find the value of c and also develop these ones, it does not matter that you are going to find the particular solution or the general solution, you have to find the C and D. From where? That is the question. All right, this here represents the Y that you're going to substitute here in place of Y. So it means if we substitute Y here, we are going to need also dy dx. 
we are also going to need the second derivative of that. So we are going to need from this uh, part that we introduced, sorry, from this part that we introduced, you're going to need the y dx, that is the derivative of y with respect to x for this particular uh, part. So this cx is going to give us a c, it's a linear, so this will be a c. D is a constant, so it gives us what? A zero. The derivative of a constant is what? A zero. We, that is the derivative of y with respect to x. We're finding the derivative of y with respect to, to x, all right? So this is a p there. Then we find the second derivative again of y with respect to x. So if we differentiate a constant, what do we get? We get a zero. So this is what you're going to do. We have our our normal, this one, our uh, from our original question, from the question, we have the second derivative, the uh, dy dx minus dy is equal to fx. So we have to substitute everything here so that we find the value of c and d. These ones, that's how you find them. You, you substitute back to the original equation. What are we having there? It's the second derivative. Our second derivative here is what? It's a zero. So we are going to have this as a zero. So zero plus the first derivative dy dx, our dy dx here is what? It's represented by what? By c. So that's plus c minus 2y. So this is minus two times y here is represented by what? By cx plus d. So it's going to be minus two into y, which is cx plus what? Which is cx plus d like this. This must give us exactly what we have on the right hand side, which is the linear that we have on the right hand side, which is given as what? Which is given as a half x. So we have formulated an equation which is which is equal for all values as long what we have on the right hand side is equal to this. We can solve for c and d. All right. Yet it's like we do not have anything there. So it's going to be c minus two times cx is going to be minus two cx like this minus two times d, which is going to be minus two d is equal to the half of what to the half of x. So how now are we going to find the value of C and the value of D? By equating, all right? Just like what we have in, on our partial fractions, working with the coefficients to say, all right, this is the coefficient of X, all right? I have X here. So working with the coefficient of X, what is the coefficient of X on the left-hand side? The coefficient of X is the term that is affecting X here, which is what? Minus 2C. So minus 2C must be equal to the coefficient of X on the right-hand side, which is one over two. So we can find the value of C by dividing by negative. Uh, this is going to be negative one over four. Half divided by uh, a negative, there is gonna be negative one over four, that's our C. To find D, we move on to the constant. So this time you are going to equate the constants. You are just working with the constants only. So on the left hand side, we've got C, it's a constant minus two D, these are constants. All right, take note, a constant, we do not have x on that one. So meaning to say c minus 2d, which is our constant, is equal to what? On the right-hand side here of the equation, do we have a constant? Yeah, well, we do not have. So it means this one was same as plus a zero. So it means there is what there? There is a zero. The number, if it is not there, it means there was a zero there. All right, so that's it. We can find the value of what? Uh, the value of d, since we are given that c is minus one over four, so minus, one over four uh, is going to be equal to, if we transpose this minus two D, this side is going to be a positive two D divide by two by two. So D is gonna be what? Minus one over eight, minus one over four divided by two, that's minus one over eight, right? So that's the value of D minus one over eight. So it means that we can rewrite our particular integral in a, 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 in a better way. All right, because it was given as yp is equal to cx plus d, all right? So remember that yp was equal to cx plus d. So if yp was equal to cx plus d, let us substitute what we got. So it means our yp is gonna be cx, which is minus one over four for c. So we've got minus one over four x plus a d in this case. What is our d? Our d is minus one over eight. So this is gonna be minus uh, one over minus one over eight. So we have the particular integral that we are going to combine together with that complementary function to find y, okay? So now we have to combine everything. So combine this, 
uh, from this part, remember, we say it here, we're gonna combine. So therefore, uh, the, let me just use another thing here. So therefore, let us combine this as, so therefore, y is equal to yc, the complementar here, which gave us this part as it was, uh, that is a e to the exponent of minus 2x, all right, plus b e to the exponent of x, all right? Then plus yp, so we're gonna add this, so we take this as it is, so it's gonna be minus, plus minus is a minus, uh, plus minus is a minus, it's gonna be minus one over eight. So this is the expression, this is the equation that represents y in terms of x with the two constants that are there, a and b. So this is now called, this is what we refer to as the general solution for the second order. This one is your general solution, this one. If the question was asking you to determine or to have the general solution, you were going to end here. That is where you were going to end. But the question was not, is not asking us about the general. Look at the question here. Let us get back to the question and see properly. The question is, Determine, we're supposed to determine the particular solution given a condition, given these conditions uh, that we are given. We are supposed to find what? The particular solution, all right? The particular solution. So how do you find the particular solution? We have to use the information now that we are given. And what is it that we are given there? We are given that, uh, sorry, is it the one that uh, I, I took here? So I'm just gonna check what we are given. All right, sorry guys. I thought like, I thought like I memorized this. I did, I did not memorize this. I, wa I want us to take this, I want X, Y is equal to one there and uh, X is a zero, all right, no problem. And also the second derivative is a zero, X is a zero there, all right. I thought I know this one's by head. Okay, no problem guys, let me write them again. So remember that we are given the information that we are supposed to find this A and B at a condition that Y must be equal to one, but at that moment, X will be equal to zero. When X is equal to what? When X is equal to zero. And the second condition is that the second derivative of y with respect to, I mean, the first derivative of y with respect to x must be equal, equal to zero when x is equal to zero again. So these are the two conditions that we are given. So with these conditions, we can find the value of a and b. How? All right, let's start with the first, well, let us start with the first one. We are given that the, on the first condition there, y is equal to one when x is a zero. So it means in place of y, when I have what? A one. So one is equal to x, it's a zero. So it means wherever there is x, we're gonna substitute what? As wherever we see x, we are going to put what? A zero. So this is e to the exponent of a zero, which is what? Which is one. So one times a, that is gonna be a. e to the exponent of a zero is gonna give us one. One times b, which is going to give us what? A b. Any number times a zero, that's a zero. So you're gonna remain with here, minus one over eight. All right, so that's what you're gonna have. Then we can transpose this so that we have a plus b. So it means you're gonna have one plus one over eight, uh, which is gonna give us what? One plus, it's gonna be a plus on the other side. So plus one over eight like this, this will be nine over eight. So nine over eight is equal to a plus what? A plus b. Just leave it like that. It's an equation on its own, all right? So this is the one that you're obtaining when y is equal to one and x is equal to zero. But as you can see, this equation cannot, it, it did not help us to find anything. We are still, we, we have to find a and b there. We, we, we do not have anything from this, uh, from this equation. So what are we going to do? We have to move on to another condition again that we are given. And what is the condition? If we differentiate y with respect to x, they are saying that derivative must be equal to zero when x is equal to zero. So we have to differentiate this one, derivative, we have to differentiate dy dx. So we have to differentiate everything, then substitute. So what is the derivative of y with respect to x? So we differentiate, remember e, we drop the exponent, 
So that will be minus 2 here. We drop like this one. We find the derivative of x, which is minus 2. So it's going to be minus 2a e to the exponent of minus 2x. All right, we differentiate e. So if we drop a 1, 1 does not affect us. So it's going to remain as it is. All right, we find the derivative here of minus 1 over 4x, which is minus uh, 1 over 4. The derivative of minus 1 over 8, that's a, a 0. So this is our, our derivative. So they are saying this first derivative must be equal to, so it's an equation, zero is equal to. We are now substituting what we are given. What are we given? X must be equal to zero if this is equal. So here we're gonna put a zero as well again. So we are back to that condition. Uh, e to the exponent of a zero is a one. So one times minus two A, that's minus two A. All right, then here we're gonna have again zero here. So it's a one, one times B which is a b uh, minus one over four. So we can take the minus one over four the other side so that it can be a positive. So that's one over four is equal to minus two a plus what? Minus two a plus b. So we have formed another equation, a second equation. So it's different from the other question. Another question you solve a first, then after that you have to substitute it. But here you have got two equations that you have formulated with both a and B, A and B. So these are simultaneous we're gonna solve. So for solving simultaneous, it's up to you. I don't know which method are you going to use. Are you going to use uh, substitution, elimination? This one is up to you. It's up to you. But what we need is to solve for A and what? To solve for A and B. But if you check here, we can make B the subject, also make B the subject here, all right? So if we make B the subject here, it means uh, therefore here is gonna be nine over eight, minus eight is equal to B. This represents what B, okay? We do the same thing here. Uh, one over four transpose negative two, this side is gonna be a positive. So that will be positive two A is equal to what? Is equal to B. So there is no way that these two will be equal. This B here and this B here are the same if these two are not equal. It means these two are also equal. So we have formed an equation, so therefore, it follows that nine minus eight minus a should be equal to this part also, which is one over four plus two a. Ah, this is solving guys. You can use whatever elimination method, whatever method that you want. Yeah, I'm just taking advantage of uh, this person, right? So I'm just gonna transpose this one to this side. Nine over eight minus one over four. All right, let me have my calculator here. Uh, nine over eight, I'm gonna subtract one over four that side. So this is subtract one over four. Uh, it's gonna be seven over eight. So seven over eight will be equal to, if I transpose the negative a, this side is gonna be a positive. So it will be two plus a, which is three a. So that will be three a. So definitely to find a, we have to divide by three, both sides. So that will be seven over eight divided by three. So that seven over eight that we had here, I'm just gonna divide by three. That will be uh, seven over 24. So A is seven over 24, okay? That's our A. So to find B, we're just gonna substitute uh, on any of these equations. Remember we've got two equations here. So you're gonna substitute any of these. B is equal to nine over eight minus A or one over four plus, I'm just gonna choose this one, nine over eight minus A. So it means, nine over eight like this minus a remember our a we got seven over 24 so seven over 24 like this we get our value of b so b is what uh five over six so therefore our b is gonna be five over six and b is five over six we just substituted we sub in any one you can even substitute here you must get the same answers just substitute the value of a that you got there. So this is it. We have got our final presentation now because we remember we wanted to find the value of A and B so that we finalize to have the, uh, the particular from the general solution that we had here. You find you have now to substitute everything to have what? To have this part, uh, the, the particular solution, the one that we are given. So it's y is equal to a e to the exponent. So we are just substituting now the values that we, we got in the previous in the previous case. That's how you play around uh, with these persons. All right.
So let us substitute, remember, our format before. So therefore, our final answer for the wall of this y is going to be y is equal to, remember before it was a e to the exponent of minus 2x. So a is 7 over 24. So that's 7 over 24 e to the exponent of minus 2x. Then it was class b, class b, our b, we got 5 over 6. So it's 5 over 6. It was e to the exponent of x, remember. All right, then the rest, it remains as it is that minus 1 over 4. There was a minus 1 over 4x there and a minus 1 over 1 over 8. You are just substituting here where there is a here, where there is a and where there is what? Where there is a and b. The rest remains as it is. So this now is your particular solution. By finding A and B, you now have what is called the particular solution. Not the particular integral, the particular solution. Particular integral is something else, that YP there. We use that particular integral, all right, sorry, that YP. So it's different from this, this is a solution. So that's how we're supposed to have this person. Uh, as you can see, yeah, it can be a straightforward person. If it is a case that we, know like exactly what is required for that particular uh, function, especially on the determining of what uh, the particular integral. Do not confuse for the particular integral because if we have yp, which is cx plus d, we have to substitute everything so that we find the value of c and d into this equation that we had before. So that's it, guys. We just hope we're going to have uh, similar persons or persons that are more complicated than this so that we'll be able to revise them together before, before our exams. But that's how you'll be given these persons.